Okay, that's my attempt to try to make this a little bit more interesting. But federal grants is part of the concept of fiscal federalism. Okay, fiscal federalism, besides the fact that it has um, its roots in economic policy, and y'all know how much I love economics, um, fiscal federalism is the pattern of spending, taxing, and providing grants in the federal system. It is the cornerstone of national government's relationships with states and with local governments. Just like the fact that your parents are providing for you to make sure that y'all can get what you need in order to live, the federal government is providing for the states in order for them to get what they need to provide services to maintain the public good in their state. And just like your parents can control you with giving you money or withholding money from you, the national government can control the states with giving money or withholding money. And um, it was most evident, really, fiscal federalism is most evident in early history with the British after the French and Indian War. Um, how did they control the colonies? That's right, through taxation, Stamp Act, Sugar Act, all um, the Tea Act, all of those taxes that we didn't like because it was taxation without representation. But the reason why government will give money to the states and ask from, for money from the states is because it is important that the government make sure states can pay for services and programs. So the government appropriates and appropriate means gives out. The government gives out money to the state so states can pay for their services and programs. Now, why give any money to the state? It's important to give money to the states in order to make sure that every state can establish a minimal national standard and that we can equalize resources. You know, people who live in Massachusetts and Connecticut have a higher per capita or per person and per household income than people who are living in Alabama and Mississippi. So what you want to do is make sure that even though the Alabama and Mississippi government isn't making as much money through tax revenue from their poorer residents than Connecticut or Massachusetts, you want to make sure that those states can still provide basic quality services to their people like education, transportation, um, and certain utilities, and health care. Um, another reason we give money to the states, the national government does, is it's a method of taking care of national problems without adding another national government agency to the mix, um, ideally. And if you can see this chart, it's a little blurry, and I'll show it to you in class. but the green, hold on, let me look at a cheat sheet, because that is a picture, obviously. <clears throat> the green, that lime green, is health care. And this is how much money, or the percentage of the um, grant pie, the national government gave the states for health care. That's 1990. Then in 2000, all right, the chunk of pie that went to health care, okay, and that's like, Medicaid and Medicare, okay, that went up. And then now, half of the money that the national government provides the states in 2010 goes to health care and health related services, so Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and think, you know, a lot of people say that we spend a lot of money on, <coughs> excuse me, or a lot of money on welfare programs and income security programs, but actually that has decreased. The percentage that the federal government has given for income security, which is in this teal color right here, has steadily decreased. Now why might the number for Medicare and Medicaid increase? That's right, older people. There's more and more old people, and we'll get into that a lot when we talk about health care policy. Okay, types of grants. Uh, the old way of giving money is revenue sharing. Okay, revenue sharing was when the federal government gave a lump sum to the states and local governments and told them to share it. 
Um, it was proposed by Lyndon Baines Johnson. It was popularized by Nixon. So basically it's giving the states money and then the states get to decide how they're going to use it and how much they're going to devote to particular services. Um, that would be like if your parents gave you $200 before school starts and said, here you go, without giving you any direction or any rhyme or reason of how they intend you to spend it, you're going to spend it the way you want to, okay, and you might not buy what you need. And you might go and you might take your girlfriend or your boyfriend out to dinner, or you might go buy, you know, a new pair of Jordans, and there's all your money. Okay. And when your mom asks you, did you get a binder? And you're like, no. Did you get a calculator? No. Did you get socks? No. Okay, so essentially your mom has to fork over more money to give you those things because you didn't buy them yourself. Uh, but the whole thing of giving a blank check to the states was to allow them to do what they felt was right and necessary for their people and provide the services they thought were necessary. Uh, it was part of devolution revolution. How does it correspond to devolution revolution? It gives more states power in how they're going to spend their money. But it didn't work out. Uh, it ended with Ronald Reagan. And it ended with Ronald Reagan because the revenue ran out. Um, in the mid-80s, we couldn't afford to give blank checks to the states because the states were coming back and asking for more money. Because just like you don't buy what you need if you're not given direction, the states weren't buying what they needed. And the federal government would have to come back and help supplement the states with more and more money. So they knew that the people within that state would have essential services. So it ended. And in the 1980s. Uh, now we really have a system of federal grants. And federal grants, you have a couple more rules to follow. Now there are two types of grants. There are categorical grants and there are block grants. Um, I'm going to add formula grants to this. Okay, And that's not in your notes, so you need to add that into your notes. Um, okay, so with grants, you have a little bit more rules to follow. Um, there are a couple more provisions. But granting money to the states is another way that the federal government can make sure that the states are providing for their people. Categorical grants. Categorical grants are money that the federal government gives to a state for a very specific purpose. Okay, um, They're grants that can only be used for specific items or categories of state and local government. Generally, they come with a lot of strings attached or a lot of rules. And in some cases, the state could even be required to contribute money. So in a categorical grant, there's <clears throat> in a categorical grant there's going to be um, specifics that states have to follow. Just like if your mom were to give you that $200 at the beginning of school, she might say, you can have this $200 but you need to spend it on binders, pencils, pens, socks, underwear, um, two shirts, three pairs of pants, a pair of shoes, and no, your shoes cannot exceed the cost of $50. Okay, Categorical grants, lots of strings attached. And then she's going to tell you, on top of giving you that $200, if you want my $200, you have to spend 100 of your own dollars to buy a couple of things as well. And you think to yourself, well, I'll, I invest $100 into it, but she's going to give me $200, so I will have $300 total. And I have to spend it in a specific way, but I really need her $200, and I really need new stuff for school, so I'm really going to do what she says. Okay, states say the same thing. I really need this money from the federal government. Yes, I might have to contribute some, but I really got to pay for these services, so I'm going to do what they say. Um, pro uh, formula grants. Um, are distributed according to a specific formula that is dictated by a piece of legislation. So there might be a law saying that um, the state of Virginia can get this money 
for education, but 30% of it must go to STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. 20% uh, of it has to go for technology in the classroom and developing 21st century learners. Okay, so formula grants have specific formula. Um, project grants are given um, as a, an award, like um, based on merit. Uh, a lot of your a lot of your professors when you go to college they would have done some research some groundbreaking uh, like research on alternative sources of energy and they submit that research in a paper to the federal government and then the federal government will grant them money based on the merit of their research and that money will go back into the university for more research and more development of technology okay so grants and aid or block, um, project grants are a type of categorical grant. Okay, the last type is a block grant. Block grants, um, kind of more general. They don't have to go to a specific thing. Um, they, they don't have to go to a particular category. They're given more or less automatically to states based on more broad program areas like community development or um, social services. So if you have a block grant for community development, for one state community development could be making and building more recreation centers. In another state community development could be attracting more businesses. In another state community development could be um, job and education training programs. Um, so it just depends. They have more discretion or more choice, the states do, of how they spend that money. Um, and they, they come to it automatically. So it'd be like if in August you automatically know your mom's going to give you $200 for school. Um, she tells you this is for school, not to take your girlfriend out, but this is for education. And then you get to decide how you're going to spend that money. You, know, you might look and say, ah, I've got binders from last year. I don't need any new binders this year, but I do need a couple of new pairs of jeans. Um, but you have more choice. Okay. Uh, what kind of grant would the states like the best? Well, um, the grants that you're going to like the best are block grants because they give you more choice. Um, now, what kind of grant would a Republican like the most? A Republican would like a block grant. Uh, they'd like the states to have more power over making those kind of decisions. Democrats are going to like categorical and formula grants because the federal government is going to have more control over the state's behavior and it will allow the federal government to make sure that the states are providing equally for every person. And we will get into that, the politics of federalism, fiscal federalism, a little bit more.